What is up everyone? JD here. Hope you're all doing well today. Still really hot here, but I wanted to go ahead and get another long-term disassembly maintenance video out and it's going to be for the Civivi Altus. This one I haven't quite had six months. This one's been a little over three, right around four months that I've had this one. Again, one of my favorite companion carries, great for fifth pocket, pocket organizers. And uh, it would really be a good main knife if you have medium hands. This is going to be a really great size for you. Uh, for me having the larger hands, this is definitely more of the companion carry, fifth pocket carry variety. So what we're going to be needing today is you're going to need a set of really nice tools. You can look down in the description very bottom tools are linked i show you the different types of wee hobbits that you can get you can get the cursaw driver and it houses the tools inside really nice if you need space saving or if you want something that's a little fancy but not too expensive this is about the price of a tactile pen um, it is the scout tool and i have the quarter inch bits uh three quarter inch bits that go with it. This is all linked down in the description for you if you want that. It'll take you right over there so you can get those bits. But it is linking to the stubby Weeha bit. I recommend that um, if you're just getting tools specific for this hobby. You'll need the T6 here to go ahead and take off the pocket clip. I did buy the banter pocket clip because I really do not like the standard Civivi pocket clips. I like this because it's one thickness all the way down the pocket clip so that when you actually put your hand over top of the tip here, it does feel good in hand and it has enough of a lip to actually, I have found with all my clothes, catch really nicely. The roundedness and the smoothness and the angle and everything work really well. So with your T6 bit, go ahead and get your pocket clip screws backed all the way out. Keep in mind the top one is longer because it is going through the barrel. So you're going to want to make sure that you keep take note of that. Make sure the longer one going through the standoff in the back is on top so that when you go to put it back together, you have the correct bolt in that hole. You don't want to strip or mess anything up. I recommend at this point, go ahead and opening the knife and then loosening the other bolt, actually that's gonna be a T8. Go ahead and loosen it just a touch. Once you have it a little loose, go ahead and work your pivot back out. And then that way you're not having anything kind of tweaked or cocked or anything like that. Go ahead and work your pivot bolt all the way out. If you're disassembling your Altus, your spring is directly underneath the scale. Go ahead and back the other bolt all the way out. Make sure that you keep pressure applied to the scale. I go ahead and recommend laying it down flat while keeping pressure and let it raise slowly until all the pressure from the spring is gone and you will have safely removed the scale and you can move that out of the way. Just a little bit of oil, so I am gonna just go ahead and use a dry cloth to clean off the wood scales. If you're using G, if you have G10 or micarta, you can use the alcohol. I recommend you move your spring safely out of the way now at this point because you have no lock bar you should be able to just freely wiggle everything loose and move it out of the way i recommend if the lock pin does what it did here i recommend just setting that to the side for now and going ahead and removing the blade you can remove the button with it but i i just found that it's easier to lay it in there keep make note like on all Civivis, the smooth side of the caged bearings, uh, the caged bearings face outward. All right. And then what you can do at this point is you can just cover up the button with your thumb and your pinky and tap out the other side. So I, again, I like to leave, I take as little apart as possible, but if it's really dirty, you're going to want to disassemble and clean it. I recommend a little bit of rubbing alcohol if it's really bad which it's not too bad. What you're seeing here is mostly where it is wearing the track in on the black wash and perhaps a little bit of dirt. I also recommend that you clean over top of the path just to make sure that everything is nice and clean. The button lock rides, whoops, I have it upside down. The button locks riding along here, you can see here where the button lock, when it's when the spring's pushing it in the closed position until it goes into the lock position, it's riding along this edge of the blade. And you can see here 
where it makes contact for it to lock up. So just clean all that really good out. Use rubbing alcohol if you feel like it's really dirty. Same thing, go ahead and clean both of your bearings. Wow, they're pretty clean. They were a little dry though. And I, I do recommend you exercise caution when you apply the lube here, because you don't, pretty clean. You don't want it to get onto the button lock too much because that does tend to create lock stick and it does affect the action. All right, so that looks nice and clean. Oh, I just realized, oh, it's in there pretty good though, so I might not mess with it. Yeah, it's in there pretty good. I just realized the lanyard barrels in here, but the tolerances on it are so tight, it's not falling out. I usually recommend having everything that's, that can potentially come loose, have it on the other side. So hopefully, hopefully yours behaves a little bit better. So I would go ahead, just recommend, there's a little bit of Loctite inside of the pivot there. I recommend just going through and kind of cleaning everything off, make sure there's no dirt, debris, or anything that's going to affect the performance of your knife. With that all done, the spring is the last thing I would recommend putting back in there. Go ahead and put your stop pin back in. I have larger hands, so I always struggle with this just a little bit. As I get it in there pretty easily. <laughs> Use your favorite oil. I like hops gun oil because I trust it on my pew pew. So I trust it with my knives. If you like KPL or if you like something completely different, that is fine. Whatever works for you, you can use. Just I wouldn't recommend WD-40. <laughs> or if you do get the, uh, they have actually nice oils now from WD-40. I know this because I mountain bike. So they have like a dry lube. If you mountain bike in the dry, when it's not raining, you can use that and it puts like a silicone layer over top of the chain that's resistant to high temperatures. And that's really nice. And then they have a wet lube. So like if you live in a muddy climate, it'll keep the chain oil, but the mud won't stick to it. I recommend just a few drops on the bearing itself and working it in. And then remember, smooth side out, go ahead and drop that down. I recommend that you take your pivot and just go ahead and put a couple of drops, really small drops on the top of the pivot, let it fall down naturally on its own. You can go ahead at this point, drop the blade down. You'll need to put it in the locked out position to make sure that this notch, <laughs> sorry, this notch right here is actually gonna line up with the button lock so that it'll drop into place. My fingers are oily. I should have cleaned them before I grabbed this. So I'm just cleaning the blade and my fingers off so that it's not slick in hand. And then you just have to work it in, be patient. I recommend you hold the scale and everything in place so that you don't bump it accidentally. I recommend you line up your holes <laughs> and then just kind of jiggle it down a little bit. It should fall into place relatively easy once you've done that. Now. Grab your oil again, same three triangles. I like to do just a little bit on the track so that as it moves around on the knife, it has a little bit of extra lube in there. And then I just like to coat the bearing itself up. I find that that gives it really smooth action without being so oily that I have to worry about like, am I, am I getting dirt and debris down in the pivot and that is that going to affect the action so um, that feels yeah that feels pretty good same thing remember smooth side is showing if that helps you all right the last thing that I recommend that you do is go ahead reinstall oh I almost forgot the triangle here do your triangle here on the track as well and this is nice because I can really show you how how light I'm doing these there you go. So hopefully that helps you see just really lightly. I recommend putting the skeletonized liner in place. Make sure everything falls in nicely. Just jiggle it lightly until it falls in. Do not muscle it, do not force it. It will go into place just fine. The last thing I recommend doing is grabbing the spring and putting the spring down into the button make sure it's sitting flush looks okay and you will be working this onto it and putting it down into place and then you'll grab your pivot bolt and get that tight down until there's no more resistance when you're tightened it 
free handed. Don't over tighten it just yet because you don't want to kink or damage anything. All right, so that is down in place. I felt everything snap or click or fall into place. So I'm gonna grab my pivot bolt, which still has just a little bit of Loctite on there. Anything, as long as it's dried on, anything that's on there previously should be enough to keep it in place. But do keep in mind that when you're working with the smooth scale like this wood or carbon fiber, you're going to want to reapply that Loctite. So again, I got it to the point where it's just giving me a little bit of resistance. I'm going to grab the loose T8 that goes to the top of the scale and use the T8 screw to put that back in place. Now I'm going to go ahead and just give it a little bit of a turn to make sure that it's locked down in place. So everything should be secure at this point. You can go ahead and finish just giving that a little bit more of a turn and then when you get it all the way tight just back it off just a smidge so that you have enough room for the blade to drop free freely but not have any side to side play. Remember again make sure your long bolt is at the top go ahead and drop those in place these are going to both take a t6 if you don't have the a spare tool with a t6 in it go ahead and switch your bolts out i mean your uh, bits out go ahead and get these worked back in remember the top one's longer so it's going to take a few more turns and go ahead and get that last one in make sure that they're nice and secure let's check the side to side it's a little tight yeah it's a little tight so I'm gonna loosen it back out just a little bit more just little turns little adjustments all right that might have been a little much but it was pretty tight nope no play feels smooth let me go ahead and clean the oil off clean my fingers off nice and centered I know it's a little hard to see in this light but hopefully you can see that's nice and centered nice and smooth action feels really good if you did put the Loctite on there if you needed it make sure that you don't have um, I think it came out just a little bit all right just a little bit of a turn feels smooth still I love the sound of this one has nice acoustics to it so that's your disassembly and maintenance um, again we're looking at four months versus six on this one but I did want to go ahead and take it apart it was relatively clean a little dry on the oil so it's got a good amount of oil on there it'll be another six months probably before I do anything again unless I take it you know if, if I'm getting it really dirty and I'm using it a lot, I'll probably do it at three months instead of six months. But the way that I'm able to rotate my knives and I can rotate through them pretty good, um, you see they do get a little bit of use. Mostly opening packages, you can see it's out towards the tip, getting into stuff. Um, and a little bit, I did take it across some cardboard. I did break down some small boxes when I had this with me because I like to see how the Nitro V is going to perform and how long. You know it'll go in between needing a sharpening i do strap my knives after i use them just to kind of maintenance the edge but if i feel like it's getting really glassy i'll take it across some stones put a nice toothy grit on it and then strop it up a little bit to make sure i knock the burrs off but this has been a great knife i love the black and the wood but i also have seen where the micarta and the black look really good that i think it's the green micarta that looks really good as well and then you know the other variants the g10 with the black looks good too the red g10 just a great knife very nice ergos absolutely no locks rock no side to side the quality is there on this one it feels great i have found that i really enjoy thumb studs on a button lock they work really really good i think i have the sachet from Simcut. That one has both the flipper tab and thumb studs. Man, that one's a great budget knife as well. But if you like something smaller or you like the color combos or you want something with a little bit more of a um, premium budget steel. So the 9CR on the sachet is what I would call the budget steel. This Nitro V, 14C28N, 154CM, those are premium budget. So you're paying a little bit more, but you're not paying as much as you are for a premium knife. 
and you're getting better materials as a result. And um, this is a really solid build. So hopefully this has helped you again, the banter pocket clip, I'll link that um, in this video as well. So you can find that. Cause again, I think it looks better than the standard Civivi pocket clip. Here you go. This is an older Civivi pocket clip on the uh, Astacus. So I just think overall, I think it looks better. It's more comfortable because your hands being supported by more material here. And then um, this is the old Civi pocket clip. I used to buy these instead, even though it looks like it's really sharp angled because it has a wider contact patch here. You don't feel the bite as much. So it feels really good. I do apologize again for the lighting today. Um, hopefully it'll cool down a little bit here soon or maybe i can get out to the garage earlier in the day and go ahead and get in there while it's cool and i have the better lighting in the backdrop as well if you enjoyed this video do me a favor consider leaving a like for the video i really appreciate the support if you are subscribed i appreciate the support as well if not consider subscribing and following along as i bring you the content i'll be doing reviews disassemblies, long-term updates, blade battles, and comparisons. I really do appreciate the support from everyone out there. I hope you all have a fantastic week, and until next time, peace.